Hallelujah. Praise God. I welcome you to Winning Word tonight. My name is Jonathan Fajambola. Uh, God bless you as you join us. Tonight, I believe we are going to have another wonderful time in the presence of God. This is going to be a, a, a great moment together. We I'll be starting the new series, Praying uh, with Results. Hallelujah. Uh, but before we go into the into the word I have with me tonight, and uh, always now on Winning Word, 
every Thursday we will do this regularly. Uh, he will be in, he will be in charge of the worship while I minister the word. I want you to know that he's a very, very anointed uh, uh, minister, a, a mistral of the Lord. Uh, very anointed, the hand of God is upon him, and I believe that as a minister, uh, the presence of God will, will be with us, and uh, uh, the glory of God will be made manifested, and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified among us. So I welcome this evening, Minister Blaise Mirindi, to give us the worship. Hallelujah.
Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you that you are here with us tonight. Thank you, Lord, 
that as your word comes forth, it will bring healing, it will bring it will bring deliverance, it will bring blessing, and our lives will never be the same. Thank you, Lord, that by your spirit tonight, your name, your name be glorified among us. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. We can lower the volume a bit. Hallelujah. I welcome you once again to a winning word. Hallelujah. That I believe you have enjoyed the ministration of uh, Minister Blaise Mirindi. Hallelujah. I've been tremendously blessed. Tonight, I welcome you once again. Like I said at the beginning of the transmission, that now every Thursday, 7.30 Central European time, we'll be having this program. Uh, occasionally, I'll be bringing guest speakers, but the Tuesday's meeting, uh, we are not going to be having that again. Occasionally on Thursdays, I'll be bringing guest ministers. And occasionally also, I'll be joining uh, Minister Blaze, who will be guest ministers also. Uh, the Lord continue to be with us. The Lord continue to guide us. So that will be on every Thursday. Every Friday, we have our prayer meeting as a church. And uh, sometimes we go live, sometimes we don't. But you can always join us live um, on Sundays uh, at 10.30 Swiss time. Uh, you have a couple of announcements I want to make. The book you are looking at is a book that is about to come out. Uh, the title is Manifesting God's Best. That book uh, is written by Dr. Collins Ojo, Pastor Collins Ojo. Uh, I have gone through this book. Uh, it's a very, very powerful book. Anyone who is serious about manifesting their potential and to fulfill their God-given destiny, I encourage you to get a copy. It's going to be on Amazon, hopefully, within the next two weeks. Hallelujah. And my latest book, The Ear in Ear, I believe some people, you, you have a copy, hallelujah. My latest book, The, the Year in Year. Uh, if you don't have a copy, you can get it also on Amazon. Uh, but if you want a free copy, you can contact me uh, through the church website, www.winningfaithministries.org. And uh, you leave your details there we will see how to get you the free copy. I will need your email address. I can send it to you in electronic form. Hallelujah. So manifesting God's best will be coming out soon. And uh, the year in year is already out. Hallelujah. And uh, people are buying, even on Amazon, people are buying. Uh, if you are interested, if you want it for free, like I said, contact us and uh, we will send it to you. Hallelujah. Sorry tonight, there was a mistake in the setup, but I'll correct it next time. I realized that the setup I had on Facebook, uh, I'm not able to, you are not able to give comment. I'm so sure that some of you will have been giving comment. I was now also wondering what was going on, you know, but I realized that there was a setting I did. I mistakenly did that. So sorry. Uh, but uh, I can put on your comments later. You can just put up your comment on Facebook. We will go through it afterwards. God richly bless you. Tonight we are starting a series that are titled Praying with Results. Praying with Results. And um, our, our key uh, scripture uh, is taken from uh, the book of um, the book of Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, from Luke chapter 11. Hallelujah. 
I want you to see it. That's why I, I paused. Okay. Luke chapter 11. We are reading Luke chapter 11 from verses 1 to 13. And the Bible says once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and uh, his disciples, they came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Hallelujah. Verse 2, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your kingdom be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say amen. Uh, then teaching them more about prayer, the Bible said that he used a certain story to teach them. Uh, he says, suppose you went to a friend's house and at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread, you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. Hallelujah. Verse number seven, and suppose he called out from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for a night, for the night, sorry, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though, he won't do it for the friendship's sake. If you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible said further in verse 9, Jesus said, and so I tell you, keep on asking, you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks find, and, ev and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Hallelujah. Your fathers, if your you fathers, if your children ask, for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, like I said, we are looking at a series titled uh, Praying with Results. I don't claim that I have all the answers, I have all the revelation to prayer, but we can learn a few things together in this passage. Hallelujah. Their problem wasn't that uh, they were prayerless people. Because they told us that John taught his disciples. So the disciples pray like their mentor. Hallelujah. So, but they, 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 they've, they've, they've realized with Jesus that uh, their own problem wasn't not that they were praying, but they saw that Jesus always, Jesus' prayers always carries results. Can I have an amen? Uh, this is a similar experience that we are having today with many believers in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, many people are getting wearied in their prayer life. Many people uh, are, 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 are wondering what is going on in their prayer life. And you see more and more uh, in, 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 in every church, uh, the least attended meeting is the prayer meeting. But ladies and gentlemen, I believe with all my heart that is going to change. Uh, we are going to see more people coming back to prayer meetings. We are going to see prayer life of people getting on fire. We are going to receive bread baptism because uh, as we have revelation of what prayer is and what prayer is meant, uh, we'll be seeing more results. And because of the results we are going to be seeing, our life will be more glorious, and our glorious life will attract more people. And that glorious life, uh, when you begin to have good results in your prayer life, you wouldn't want to give it up. 
You will want to come again and again. You want to be at every prayer meeting. You, your own personal prayer life will be important to you. The corporate prayer of, uh, life will also be very, very important to you. So it, we, I believe that this series will be a blessing to many people. God spoke to my heart to share this and uh, not to be silent about it. Many people are having questions at the back of their mind, but I want you to know that God is not a wicked God. The purpose of prayer is for God to answer us. God wants our prayer to have results. God wants to, 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 to let our prayers be answered. There is no problem with God. In fact, Jesus told us that we should keep on asking until our joy be full. And in the mighty name of Jesus, to everyone under the sound of my voice, to anyone that will listen to this broadcast, your God of heaven will answer your prayers and your joy will be full. Hallelujah. So the Bible said, told us in, in verse 2, they asked the verse 1, they, went, they came to Jesus. Remember, they came to him. Hallelujah. And as they, they came to Jesus, they had a question. They had a demand. That their demand is this. Teach us how to pray. Because we want our prayer life to have results the same way that your prayer life has got results. Hallelujah. Then the Bible said in verse 2, Jesus told them, when you pray, say, hallelujah. When you pray, say. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is communication. When you pray, say. When you pray, say something. When you pray, you have to, 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 to open your heart, you have to open your mouth. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that it is communication. And that involves speaking and the listening. I said it involves Speaking and the listening. He said, when you pray, say. It involves speaking and listening. Uh, the problem with some people is that they only speak, they don't listen to God. The, another problem is that some people just assume that God will do it and they don't need to say anything. No. You need to speak. But at the time, you need to also listen to God. Perhaps he wants to tell you something, to bring you wisdom, to bring you revelation, to, 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 to tell you what you need to do uh, so that you will get the results you needed to get. So if the, the important thing is that when you pray, say, but you have to know what you say. You have to know uh, the, the, the principles of prayer. And the first principle I want us to to see tonight, which is the subtitle of this, of this message, is Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Heavenly Father. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that this is key. This is key for every believer. Everyone that is expecting to see results. It is important you know how you begin and how you go about it. The place to begin is Heavenly Father. Hmm. Uh, let me explain this. Prayer is like going on a flight. When you board a flight, when you are traveling, by air. Uh, when you are taking off, they said, use your seat belt. And when you are also about to land, they said, use your seat belt. Because the takeoff is important, the landing is also important. Except when there is turbulence, when there are turbulences, they ask you to use your, uh, your seat belt within the flight. But Either there are turbulence or no turbulence, the takeoff and the landing, they are very, very cautious about it. Same thing with prayer. You must know to have a good takeoff in prayer and a good landing. And the best place, the good takeoff in your prayer is to know that you are, you are going to go to the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus said, when you pray, say, 
our heavenly Father, or our Father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. We got to go to the Father in the name of Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Can I say that again? We go to the Father in the name of Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, that our Heavenly Father, that our Abba Father, is still the King of Kings, is still the Lord of Lords, is still the I am that the I am, is still the ancient one. They are all his names, hallelujah. He's still the faithful one. He's still the righteous one. So as you approach him, uh, you can call him all these names, but it is important that above all, you see him as a, as a father. Hallelujah. You see God as a father. You see God as a father. Do you see God as a father? And it, 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 it means that you must approach him. Uh, in you, your relationship with him is important. You must approach him in love. You must approach him in approaching someone that you know that he, 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 will, he will do you good. Hallelujah. Your father, my heavenly father. That is where Jesus uh, uh, lay so much emphasis in his ministry. You may never have seen it before, but when Jesus was with the disciples, he had to tell them over and over and over and over, referring to, to God in their presence as his father and their father. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason for that is this. Uh, if you look at the book of John 10, uh, verses 29 to verse 36. Uh, the Bible said the, 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 the teachings that the disciples, the apostles, they were used to was that when you approach God, you cannot call God your father. That was why in, Mark, in John chapter 10, verses 29 to verse 36, the Bible said they wanted to stone Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, why? Because they said you call yourself the son of God. In calling yourself the son of God, you have made yourself to be equal as God. They said that is blasphemy. So Jesus said, but ah, why are you so angry? Uh, the Bible said that to whom the word of God came, he made them God. So if I call myself the son of God, this is not blasphemy. And over and over, the Bible said, for saying that, they wanted to stone him. The disciples were also involved in that, in that, in that teachings of, of that day. So anytime that Jesus had the opportunity, he wants to point it to them that God is your father and my father. It's a good place to, 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 take, to, to take off. Hallelujah. You, so you see, in the, in the passage that we read, in the book of Luke chapter 11. In the passage that we read, immediately from verse 11, we talk about taking off. In the beginning, he said, our father. Immediately in verse 11, he begins to tell them, and you, you, you have your earthly father. No earthly father will, will give snake to his son when he asks him for bread. He said, likewise, is your heavenly father. So he was laying emphasis to the fact that God is our father. He wanted to correct their belief about how to approach God. The way you approach God is really, really important. You must approach him to see, you must see him as your father. He's try, he was trying to move them away from the legalistic approach, but for them to come into a place of relationship and enjoy the love of the Father. Hallelujah. And enjoy the love of the Father. In John chapter 14, verse 8, Jesus talked about the Father, the Father, the Father, the Father. To the extent, at the point, Philip said, look, this is your doctrine about uh, my father, my father, my father. Show us the father and it will be enough for us. Jesus told Philip 
He said, haven't I been en enough with you that you are asking me, show, show us your father? He said, I am in the father and the father is in me. You, 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 you get the point. He's bringing them that, no, it is not about the law, but it is about relationship. It is about you coming into the father and the fa loving the father and the father loving you in return. When you have that assurance, you can approach God with, with, with the belief that he will do you good. Can I have an amen? And most people still don't, still have difficulty in believing that God is also their father. Jesus wanted them to know this. Jesus wanted them to, to make that adjustment. And I want you to know that even up to today, many believers have not come into that place of seeing God not only as the all-powerful God, the, the, you know, all omnipotent omniscience, but have not seen God to be their father. Because when you see God to be your father, you know that it is settled from within. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is taking each and every one of us into that place in the mighty name of Jesus. God, Jesus had to preach about this. If you look at the book of Jesus in the book of Matthew started to preach in Matthew chapter 5. And it was a very long passage. It was a very long message, sorry. In, the, in, the, in Matthew chapter 5, he started talking about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the poor, blessed are this, blessed are that. But if you move to Matthew chapter 6, he began to tell them, our Jesus, he said, God, your father. He began to refer to, to God as the father of the people that were listening. He began to call God our father. In that book of Matthew chapter 6 alone, Jesus referred to God as our father 10 times. 10 times. Because it is important for us to know God as our father. It is so important. Our heavenly father is a father that loves to give. That's another thing that Jesus said in that Luke chapter 11. He said, if you've been evil, you know how to give. How much more your heavenly father? So when first thing you realize that God is your heavenly father, and this heavenly father, he knows how to give. And again, the only thing that God gives is a good thing. The Bible said every good and perfect gift comes from above. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, God is our heavenly father. And he wants us to know that he's a God that loves to give. And what he has in stock to give are only good things. Every good and perfect gift comes from the law. Ladies and gentlemen, before you will pray to God that will, you will always have results, I want to ask you, how do you see God? How do you see God? You know, sometimes bad things happen to good people. But I want you to know that bad things does not come from God. So when you see God as your father, even when you see bad things happening, you know automatically that this is not from God. No bad thing. God does not have bad thing to give to his children. When you see these things that are not in line, with the love that God has for you, I want you to know that it doesn't come from God. Many people do. The second thing I want you to see, I don't want to jump my notes, sorry, is that how is your relationship with him? How is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? 
You see, many people use their life experience to interpret God. But God is not your experience. Many people, because of failed relationships, many people, they, they, they were disappointed by their parents. Many people, they have suffered abuse. Many people, they have suffered rejection. Many people, they have been wounded. Rejection within the family. Many people, their heart were, 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 were broken. Hallelujah. And based on that, it's like, I don't want anything that will uh, affect my heart. Many people, they, they cover their heart, they shield their heart, they protect their heart, they, they don't want it to be open. Uh, many people, they translate God through, through their earthly, fatherly experience or earthly, motherly experience. Many people, some people, they grow up with their relatives and they have been abused. They have been, people have been raped, people have been maltreated. And the wound of it is carried over. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters, if you fall under this category, I pray to God Almighty, in the mighty name of Jesus, that as I stretch forth my hands towards you, that you receive healing of every wound, of every trauma, in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of rejection. I rebuke everything uh, in your past that has caused you trauma and wants to hold you down. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive healing right now. I bind, I cast out the spirit of trauma. In the mighty name of Jesus, hurt, hurt that are not healed. I pray for divine healing of your mind, of your heart, that that wound be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over your heart. I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind, your conscience. Anywhere that the enemy is hiding with, 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 with abuse, with rejection, I, 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 we flush it out. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance right now. I, 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 I believe that as I'm praying, God is healing the hearts, the soul of men. Or, 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 or ungodly soul ties have been, have been destroyed right now. Uh, some people, because of the trauma of the past, you close your mind and you open it to the enemy. And the truth that you have, you, are, you have been having ungodly soul tie by the power of the Holy Ghost, that ungodly soul tie is, is, is cut, is broken tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, some of these things has opened doors to, 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 to marine spirits operating in people's life, having, having strange sex in the night, spiritual husband, spiritual wife. I rebuke their oppression right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I said I rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight is the night for your deliverance. Tonight is the night for your release. Tonight is the night by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. There are some of us, we, 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 we have a certain kind of dream. And whenever you have that dream, you know that something evil is going to come. The Lord asked me to rebuke that chain right now. I cut off that chain of the enemy. I command that chain to be broken right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray that your dreams will be divine dreams right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Receive the goodness of the Lord. Receive the goodness of the Lord. Receive the goodness of the Lord. Some of us, because of these things in our heart, it had become like a leakage, you know. The blessings that the love of God, when it flows, it, we just allow it to just flow through. We couldn't stop the goodness of God in our heart. But tonight, God is bringing healing to your heart. And your heart will be able to hold the goodness of God. The Holy Spirit has been crying within to you. The Holy Spirit has been crying, receive the goodness of God tonight. Receive the grace to forgive. Some of us, we need to forgive. We need to forgive. This is one of the reasons why Jesus attached forgiveness to the answering of our prayers. Hallelujah. Uh, I want you to know that if you don't forgive, you cannot uh, have that kind of a loving relationship with God. And your love life, your loving God and loving other people is important to your prayer life. I want you to know, receive forgiveness right now. The grace to forgive. I know you have been hurt. I know you have been abused. I know that you have been maltreated. Somebody is saying that, but pastor, they lied against me. Even God knows that they lied against you. God knows that it's not the, the truth, but the truth is telling you to embrace the truth to Night. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you. The Holy Spirit is ministering to, 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 to us right now. Receive the goodness of God. Receive the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Never knew it would go this way. Thank you, Lord. 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 Please share your testimony with us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to leave your comment on the Facebook. I'll get back to you right after the, the service. If you if you want any 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 follow up, uh, you can just say it on the on the Facebook, and uh, we will follow it up. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters, uh, you see, the, we, I said we pray to the Father with the, in the name of Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in our heart. The Holy Spirit is, is crying out for us to have the revelation of God as our Father. That's what the Bible said in the book of Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to take my time to read it. Galatians chapter 6 from verse, uh, from no, Galatians chapter 4, sorry, from verse 6 to 9. This is what the Passion Translation says. Listen to me. Hallelujah. And the soul that we would know for sure that we are his true children. God released the spirit of sonship into our hearts. Moving us to cry intimately, my father, you are my true father. That is what King James says, harbor father. From within, you are crying. The Holy Spirit is pushing the love of God there. And it makes us to cry, my father, you are our true father. Hallelujah. Verse number 17 says, I mean verse number 7, sorry. Now we are no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. And because we are ease, we can access everything our Father has for us as he is of God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Don't lose hold of verse 7. He said, because we are ease, because we cry Abba Father, because we cry that Lord, you are our true father. He said we have access to all things that Christ purchased for us. Verse number 9. He said, but now we truly know him and understand how deeply we are loved by him. Why should we, even for a moment, consider turning back to those weak and feeble principles of religion as though we were subject to them? He said, look, 
when we understand the love of God, there is no way you can turn back to, rel to religion. You will stay in relationship with him. Hallelujah. He said, when we know that this, we have, we have become his father, he said, we know that we have everything that has been released unto us. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, come out of religion into a loving relationship with the Father through the Son with the help of the Holy Spirit. Can I repeat that? Come out of religion into a loving relationship with the Father through the Son with the help of the Holy Spirit. Our Father is a loving Father. And he wants us to enter a loving relationship with him. I want you to take this moment to say, Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me Jesus. Thank you for coming to save me, to rescue me. Thank you for proving your love. Tonight, by your grace, by your Holy Spirit, I receive your love. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I want you to know that God has been waiting for someone to come into this place. You, you felt so hurt. You are doing what you are doing, but there is no love for God in your heart. It used to be there, but it was leaked out. But tonight, because of what you have done, I want you to know that what had been hanging, there shall be released in the name of Jesus. The Bible said in, in, in Psalm 91, verses 14 to 15, it said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he had known my name. Listen, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. He said, when you come into that place of love with me, when you call upon me, I will answer him. He said, I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver him. And honor him. The Passion Translation put it this way. Still talking about the love of God. He said, For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, you come into a loving relationship with the Father. Not only saying he's God, but you come into a loving relationship with him. He said, I will greatly protect you. I will set you on high, safe and secure before my face. Verse number 15, I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. It means I will answer you every time you pray. I will answer you every time you pray. I will answer you every time you pray. Heaven is calling his sons and daughters to come to him in love. You know, it's so painful for a father that you want to express your love to your children, but they don't have time for you. They don't want to hang around you. It's painful. But God said, when you come and you love him, you know, prayer is not about Asking, asking, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Prayer begins from coming to the Lord, to, the, to your Father, and allow him to love you and also put your love on him. Hallelujah. When you do that, it's a good takeoff. You know, when you go to visit people like a king or so, when you are going, you don't go empty-handed. When you approach God as your heavenly father and you just love on him, you, you, you just 
hang around him, you know, just the way like John put his head on the on the on the chest of Jesus to hear his heart beat. Oh, it, it pleases him. It pleases him. It pleases him. And it will make sure that it is well with you. Hallelujah. Look, let me close with this. I believe this will come as a surprise to many people. Jesus, I told you, he preached over and over. You must see God not only as my father, which means Jesus' father, but he pointed us to us over and over that we ourselves, we must see God as our father. I tell people, God does not have stepson, does not have stepdaughter. God does not have grandchildren. He called each and every one of us son and daughter. Every one of us. That means when you give your life to Christ, you have access to everything. He said, having given us Christ, he said, together with him, all things are ours. And we must learn how to obtain the things that are ours. See him as a God that is good. See him as a God that is eager to love him and put your love also on him. Hallelujah. And the best of the best he will give to you. Let me close with this. The Bible said in, in John chapter 20, verse 17, after Jesus had been crucified, after he had gone to hell, he had taken, he took the key of, of hell and death. He came. The Bible said that Mary Magdalene wanted to touch Jesus. In John chapter 20, verse 17, I close with this. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. He said, but go to my brethren, even after resurrection. He said, but go to my brethren. He said, this is the message you need to give them. I ascend to my father, your father, and to my God, your God. I ascend to my father, your father, and to my God, your God. Listening tonight. Jesus is seated at the right hand of that his father and our father, his God and our God, for our sake. And tonight, I want you to put this in practice. I want you to approach God. Tonight, tell him, Abba Father, I love you. And tonight, I want you to make a request, a request from him. You see, I believe that God will prove himself to each and every one of us. The Bible said, to whom has believed our report, to them the hand of God be revealed. I believe that as you believe this report, I am also believing this report myself. To approach God, as my loving Heavenly Father. And I ask him in the name of Jesus. With the help of the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. And I make that request. And I believe that God of heaven will answer each and every one of us. I'm believing God for hundredfold, hundredfold. Nothing, everyone, ask tonight. And I believe that God of heaven will answer us. We're listening to Minister Blaze as he played the strings and we, we, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you.
share your testimony with us. That song you have just listening to, it was it's a fresh download of heaven to Brother Blaze. I believe you have been blessed. Please, uh, we can't just continue. We find it also difficult to, to break this transmission. The presence of God is so thick here. Glory of God. I pray that wherever you are watching the same presence, tangible, the phanerosis of the Holy Spirit, I pray to, to rest and abide with you. I pray that we move from visitation to habitation of the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit within and the Spirit upon find manifestation in our homes, in our lives, uh, in every area of our endeavor, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you. The beauty of the Lord rest upon you. I release the shalom of, of God. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Next week, we will continue. I believe you have been blessed. Please uh, invite someone. Let other people also join us. You can also share this broadcast. And you can still listen to it over and over. Understanding that God is our Heavenly Father. Signing out. This is Jonathan Fajambola with Blaise Mirindi saying, Jesus is Lord. God bless you.